it's um, it's been interesting listening to Dag and to David and to uh, to Peter. Um, Peter in particular must have been reading my mind. <laughs> He's got more or less most of the things I've been looking at the bigger picture, and Peter is looking at the same picture as we've been looking at. But it's interesting to see that they're all coming together, and we see it as being part of a very large jigsaw. We need all the different parts. We need David. We need. We need all this. We need we need supply. We need the standards and everything else. So it's been really interesting to see, to, to listen to to all, to all the other speakers. We have a housing crisis, which is, but we're not the only country with a housing crisis. It's apparently it's global, widespread, and we there's numerous reasons why we are where we are, and basically we are here because we've come out of the longest recession ever in living history, and it's been it was the most dramatic, the most severe recession ever. And as a result of it, for so 2008, there's been serious underfunding in both um, in both housing and infrastructure. The money just wasn't there. But the other problems we had was, uh, because of the recession, a lot of our skilled force went elsewhere, reskilled, left the country. Did it, they, they, so we end up with a very serious shortage right now. We have a shortage of design professionals. If you look at the SCSI, Dr. Roisin Murphy's report, speaking about the shortage of design professionals coming down the line, but we have a shortage of all sorts of trades, not just not just uh, design professionals. And the other problem has been our supply chain has been decimated. Basically, it's Nama. Nama took over, but it's co we're we're coming out of that at the moment. So homelessness has been a problem, and because of um, it's, 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 it's a problem everywhere. It's not just the street people. It's also the problem that even people in low-paid incomes can't afford the rents in Dublin. So there, it's rising the whole time. But it's also a problem because we have a rising population. The demographics are considerably changing. If you look at the last census, you'll see the demographics really are changing. Then we introduce divorce, and that means we need ex extra houses. So it's amazing, actually, how all the little bits add up. But then, of course, the other problem is we are change adverse. Where construction industry has always been change adverse, and that's one of the many, many <coughs> problems. But we're in a very interesting age at the moment, where we have digitisation, where we have, you know, modern methods of construction, where we have things. We have the fourth industrial revolution. We have Internet of Things. We're in a smart age, and we're starting to see that, and we're starting to see now what we can and can't do. But we're proceeding slowly because we need to proceed slowly, basically. But we, as construction sector, are very slow to adapt. It's it's just the way we are. And then why why do we need change? Well, there's numerous reasons why we need to change. Our system just is very very labour intensive, and we do not have that labour force. And as Peter rightly says, we have a very diminished labour force, but it's also an ageing labour force. So we need to do more with less. We also need to attract more people into the industry, and that that is an issue. But a lot of our resources, as you'll see, 30% of our building sites, resources on the building sites are wasted because of the methods <coughs> we use. We also have a problem with landfill. Industry in itself is also very fragmented. It always has been. There's always been silos and there's always been lack of collaboration. That's always been a problem. And then our problem also is our sites are, you know, trade dependent, weather dependent. There's issues with sites. And we have, again, we have problems. We need to change because of the carbon emissions, because of uh, low carbon footprints. There's a whole series of reasons why we need to change. But the main reason we need to change is because we have low productivity and we do have low margins. And that these are deterrents to people coming into the industry and we need to change the industry in line with that. But the other reason is we do have a poor industry image. We, we know that and we recognise that we need to actually start with primary schools really not even secondary schools, but primary schools, and start selling that construction is an exciting industry to be in. It's just the image that's out there. It is the only way we're going to attract more people into the industry and more professionals. But we are taking steps towards it with the apprenticeships, which are successful. We just need an awful lot more of them. Again, the other thing with <coughs> using modern methods is that it takes it puts takes jobs and puts them in the country areas, and you know it gives skills to it gives jobs to other people. Now the opportunities, we recognise there are huge opportunities and we have been doing the research and like I said, Peter has been reading my mind, <laughs> been looking at all the things, but there are huge opportunities out there. I mean, Peter's gone through a number of them, it's like the reduced costs, being a quantity surveyor, obviously cost effective and value for money are things that, you know, things that we think about, really think about, 
then there's reduced waste and there's reduced delivery time on site and there's, uh, there's numerous reasons really we need to go down that road and also it's because we've gone to inzebbing so with inzeb now it means we're trying to have reduced fuel poverty and we're trying to have more highly more comfortable homes we're trying to have them you know with better acoustics like we're looking at better better all the time i suppose but the other reason why we need to go look at other methods is we need to look at the site cost and the site cost can be phenomenal but the one advantage to doing manufacturing off-site is that we can have lighter construction but we can also be preparing the site at the same time so there is a term there is a saving in terms of time and that's what we're looking to achieve and we're looking to achieve that less money is spent in the ground and of course now with BIM and with the digital technologies and with the internet of things and smart cities and all the smart stuff that's out there this is a very good time to start being innovative it's a very good time to go forward and see what can we do better and how can we do it better and to look at different processes and we recognize that really it's early days very early days but we need to look at them and we need to see how can we improve them and we see processes as being iterative basically that we we will just keep trying to improve but as I say it's early days again sustainability is a very 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 important reason for us to do it as well now we recognize we need to embrace modern methods of construction but we also need to embrace and the reason for it is the better detailing and we have more precision engineering but the fourth industrial revolution is interesting because it's come at a really good time and it's just like it's, the whole thing's taken off really we have the internet of things and we have more sensors we have more smart cities we have more collaboration we have more it's it's a really good time to be out there it's a good time to be innovating it's a good time to be looking at things and of course the thing about off-site construction is it has many many advantages but one of the great advantages is it's safer it's quicker it produces high quality and then of course the other thing is just there's like as i say we need to in, in we need to look at for example clt cross laminated timber blue lamb timber there's a lot of things we need to be looking at newer and different types of eco-friendly uh, products that's out there and we need to see how they work and we need to reduce our carbon footprint and we need to look at different methods different systems different materials basically in a nutshell but we'll come to a stage now where we have a lot more collaboration which is interesting and a lot more digitization and we have to work together we have to see what works so it's been great listening to as i said david and the BRE and the, the certification, things like that. We need all that. We need it. And of course, we'll come to a stage where there's a lot of generative design, which is brilliant because now we can do algorithms for almost anything, which is fantastic. It can look at other options. And again, it's, it's useful. Now, there are barriers, and the barriers I see are rather like the, the national you know, roadmap. <laughs> we need skill shortages. We have skill shortages. We need more R&D. We need leadership. We need all of these kind of things. And manufacturing off-site, or whatever you want to call it, modern construction, is an emerging method. So it is new, and it has come about by the Farmer Report. And Mark Farmer has introduced it, but that was 2016 when he wrote that report. So it's interesting to see how it's taking off, but it's slow. But again, because it's slow because we need all these standards. We need certification. We need more. We need scale. We need to see what works, what doesn't work. So we need to get, get uh, you know digitize it better and again there's also the problems of sharing knowledge risk there's always risk so there is and there's lots of things to look at again we in DCC are looking and always have been we're always trying to be innovative we're trying to produce good value for money we're trying to we're always looking at the public purse and things like that so we are looking at modern methods of construction now we started off initially it's with the uh, modular homes demonstration in Nice Wall in 2016 then we followed on with the rapid build program which in 2017-18 and now our city architects in particular are looking at the phase program of delivering volumetric construction and this is our 2019-2020 and at the moment we have earmarked uh, 900 units for construction of various bundles between now and 2020 so this is uh, just to give you an example of it this is uh, the apartments we have very little actual houses but we do have some but the apartments blocks are mostly what we have and this is just an example of what they will look like or may look like and again I've been we, we have been looking at as I say the bigger picture and how it all comes together and for it to work we know we need we need standards we need certification we need skills we need to see that there is a supply pipeline out there we need we need again it's like Peter says 
supply and demand. <laughs> we need to know that, our, that there is a supply, basically. And we need to know that it does work. So we are looking at it. We wait to see what happens. And we're excited about it. And we're excited about what's happening in other countries. And we're following that very, very closely to see what's happening in other countries. And what I've done is I've put on some interesting reading again. <laughs> Peter has touched on the House of Lords one. He's also touched on the BOPAS. He's touched on a few of the different things that I've, we've been looking at. But we've also been looking at um, our Minister Owen Murphy has risen the heights. And that makes a lot of difference for us because we can get density. We can get more in the same areas. So there's other areas we need to look at. But we have been looking at. And that's really it in a nutshell. Thanks, Mary. Thank you.